Hello everyone, it's Christmas morning and it's time to unwrap my present. I must have been extra extra good this year because look what Santa brought me. Of course you knew this uh, from the thumbnail. So let's take a look at this thing. You know, one thing that I have about these that I don't like is they don't say on the box uh, the minimum radius. So uh, that, I, I kind of have a problem with this. But anyways, uh, usually when I get something from eBay, I'll just test it out right away. But because this is a Kado, uh, I didn't. I kind of have, uh, my instinct is kind of telling me that this is going to run. See now, I wish they would put that on the box, you know, uh, the rear tender is not illuminated. And the minimum operational radius is 11 or 282 millimeters. So uh, that, it, that bugs me a little bit because if you have 9 inch curves, you can't run this, and uh, that would be a problem. Uh, fortunately, I built my layout on purpose to run these. So for me, it's okay. But I wish they would tell you on the box. The other remark about the headlight uh, not operating, that doesn't really bug me, but at, uh, if you want to convert this to DCC, it's not really easy to do it. The way they've done it, there's an extra little bit of foam here. Oh no, it's not foam, it's hard plastic. So the way they've done it is they have the front end here, This front end has its own motor. It's connected to the track. And this rear end has its own motor and it's connected to the track. So you have to isolate both motors and you have to rewire that. They tell you in the instructions to use the plastic to move it around. That is the way to go, actually. Very good advice. I've been doing that for a little while, actually. But that makes a huge difference. Let's take a look at this uh, close up. Over some very uneven curves. Little trick they did. Because of course the real one didn't do that. So look at all this detail. And crisp. Look at the crisp lettering. So this would be um, the excursion train uh, version. Of course, the same tender as the FEF3, which is excellent. I have nothing bad to say about this. They have their own Kado uh, type of coupler, which is all right. It seems to be kind of easy to remove. There you go. I didn't think I was going to take this apart, but I guess yes. And you have a good look at the drawbar. Let's see. Maybe I will take it apart. But before I do, let's see if it's going to run. Just the front of the engine like that is going to make a nice thumbnail image. So uh, you guys want to take bets that this is going to run right out of the box? I would bet that yes. Let's just put some power to it. Well, what do you know? No surprise there. So of course it runs beautifully. Oh, and the um, on a lot of engines, the um, the front and rear uh, set of drivers is geared together, but on this they are not geared together. They were completely independent, so they won't always be timed like this. It's going to change depending on the depending on the weather and uh, all. The any factor could change that. Ah, what a beautiful runner. Yeah, look at that. The drivers are not aligned anymore. That didn't take long. Watch uh, as it comes out the curve. The light's going to move a little bit relative to the rest of the engine. Just like the prototype. 
so this engine it should be um, very good even if you have uneven track my track is very nice of course but uh, even if you have a little bit of uneven track it should go good so that's really neat so um, I'm gonna try and see if I can remove uh, the shell so we can take a look at what makes it tick so that should be a lot of fun I'm just speechless that doesn't happen often First, I'm going to remove the tender. Uh, tender removal is exactly like your um, your FEF3. So this, you just pull on it gently, that comes out. And then the same thing for the tender, you just pull on it very gently, it will just pop out. Put back and up a little bit. So that's the exact same tender as your FEF3. Very easy to work here. There's lots of room in there to put DCC stuff. Just gonna line it up properly in its space. And then I think you remove the cab first. Oh, there's a little coreless motor. Look at that. Uh, incidentally, most models are like that, where the two um, parts move independently. Uh, the two parts move. On a real engine, this one would be stationary, and the front part would be hinged on a Malay or the big boy. And um, the advantage of doing it like that is you can take shorter curves. Lots of models do that. I think in all scale they were doing that years ago. There's a little uh, fine detail here. That not very fragile because it's uh, malleable. Yeah, ever since I was a little kid I was looking at Model Railroad magazine and I knew I wanted a big boy. And uh, let me see if I can remove the cab without tearing everything out. Yeah, I was like, someday I'll have a big boy. Here's the method I found. If you don't, uh, if it's not easy, you just pull gently on the side of the cab and then put your screwdriver down here. And that will give you enough uh, leverage to pop the cab out. Let's have a look at this detail. I've seen a guy where he'll paint some of these things gold. You have the two side glass and a little bit of a throttle there should be a brake stand here and then the fireman stuff that's my job that i like uh, in the cab is fireman let me just see if i can get this uh boiler shell off you really have to look at these things with uh, magnification see these pipes here they made all the small hinges to allow these pipes to move just like the real engine. Right, they sure did a good job. I can see two screws in there. You have to remove the firebox sides. And that will allow you access to the little screws. This didn't get me anywhere, but there's an upper shell and a lower shell. And then if you remove this cover, Then you can see two more uh, screws, which I will remove right now. That's what I was looking for when I removed the cab. These special uh, cado screws. Now let's just see if I can remove the top part of the shell. It's the exact same principle with the sand dome. It's snapped in there and the joint is very fine. I could hardly see it, but that just snaps right in there. And then there's two more little screws. I have not, I have some, found some people that do the DCC uh, conversion for these, but I have not found a video where they do the shell removal. So 
So let's see if that's gonna allow me to remove the shell here. You have to remove uh, the very fine handrails and then the shell will, the black part of the shell will just pop out. And you can see how they did that. So I'm gonna have a look if I can, can just um, remove the, uh, the two uh, sets of drivers. The drivers are held in by the lower, uh, lower part. So I'm gonna remove this detail here. It's actually quite clever. It's uh, just connected there, connects to the frame here with these two little brass tabs. And then just the, uh, the bottom of the boiler holds everything in place up here. I'm going to remove the detail from the other side. This side took the uh, the firebox side with it, and that's okay. I'm going to remove the firebox side from here as well. So you just pry on this very gently. This is not meant to be hard. They use absolutely no glue on these. And on this side it revealed the screw. Probably in here somewhere there's another screw. Hidden in plain sight behind this air tank. So let's take these two screws out. It's nice to have the video. I'm going to be able to go back and uh, see where everything was. And let's see if I can get the two halves of the uh, two halves of the frame there, two halves of the boiler. So here's what I did. I just pried on each side of the uh, the lower part of the boiler, and I'm able to release the rearmost uh, power truck. And it's got a flywheel. And if I set this on the track, it's gonna run all by itself. Let's try to get the front one out. I am thankful for this video because I'm going to be able to put it back together using it. So um, I just pulled gently on the lower part of the boiler and that come out. So I'm getting there. I had to look at a video from the Cowdo factory. I wasn't able to get uh, the smoke box out. Turns out there's one final screw uh, behind the smoke box door and I had to get that out. So that is my last screw. In fact, at the factory, the smoke box front uh, and the smoke box itself, they go on last. So once you have that out, you're in good shape. And once you got the uh, smoke box out, you can remove the two uh, the two separate locomotives from the engine from the frame. The frame's actually not that big. The frame's not that big. It's not that heavy, but these are made out of metal, so they are kind of heavy on their own. So you got two uh, separate locomotives. They each have their flywheel. They each have their motors. And if you want to convert this to DCC, I looked at a couple of videos yesterday. Basically, you have to connect these wires to your decoder. And the people that have done it, they did it. Um, the guys would wire them uh, in parallel. So you've got two locomotives uh, working independently. Even uh, the front one has its own headlight. Now, if you want to convert this to DCC, you have to get in there, disconnect that, and connect it to your decoder. You don't even need to, the frame or the tender to work. They can work independently like that, and they have very good power pickup, as you can see. So, actually, I did want to show you that, and at the factory, I watched the factory video yesterday, they test them like that before they put it together. 
So uh, that's really interesting. I've never seen that before. What a mess. That's going to be my thumbnail, actually. Help me out. I forgot how to put it back together. Goes back together uh, very smoothly. The only thing I would have liked to improve is uh, at the factory, the uh, smoke box goes in last, so um, I should have taken that out first. So next time I'll know. The front steps come out uh, pretty easily as a matter of fact. It allows you to see all the fine detail they did for the steam chest, all the piping that's involved. They did it with a lot of detail. I did not expect that. This is really cool. Everything went back very smoothly. It was a real pleasure working with this engine. And now it's time to run some trains. Of course, uh, this is a good puller. I put a long train uh, behind it. I'm going to put links in the description to the uh, Kado factory tour and also um, the Kado uh, Big Boy Poles video. So that's going to be lots of fun. Um, all aboard! Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.